Welcome to Encounter Wargaming. Today we continue our discussion on the gods in the Warhammer 40,000 mythos. Specifically, we're going to cover the creation of a god and what causes such a thing to take place. As usual, I'm Jay, and this is Warhammer 40k Metaphysics 101. In the last video, we talked about gods and the various definitions of what constitutes a god in the 40k mythos. There are many definitions of what is considered a god, but we eventually came to the conclusion that a real god, or a true god, is a being that exists purely within the immaterium. A god is literally the thoughts and emotions of sentient races coalesced into a consciousness that becomes more and more powerful based on how extreme and prevalent those emotions are throughout the galaxy. There are many examples of gods in 40k that fit into that category, the most well known of which is likely the gods of chaos, but also includes the Eldari and Orc gods. Today I want to expand on this topic by talking about what it actually takes to create a god. The best example of this is the creation of the Prince of Pleasure, the god Slenesh. The birth of Slenesh is paralleled with the fall of the Eldari, and not coincidentally. It was the extreme emotions and psychic sensitivity of the Eldari that caused this young deity to be conceived. There are other examples we can look at to discover exactly how a god is created within the warp, the major reason I'm focusing on Slanesh today is because he sheaves the most recent of the Chaos Gods to form, and as a result we have the most information on how this took place. Luckily the Eldari are great at keeping records, even over millennia. This gives us an aspect of the fluff that explains why the creation of Slanesh is so well explained as opposed to the creation of any of the other gods. This is mostly due to the fact that Slanesh was born sometime around the 30th millennia. So the best place to start is with the ancient Eldari. The Eldari are an ancient race that can trace its lineage all the way back to the War in Heaven, where the Old Ones faced off against the Necron Tyr and their Catan allies. The Eldari were one of the races created by the Mysterious Old Ones to aid them in their war against the Necron Tyr. The Eldari were engineered to have advanced psychic abilities. They also have extremely heightened senses and reflexes, at least compared to humans, as well as an aptitude for perfection in all things, from warfare to arts to mathematics, engineering. This makes the Eldari not only excellent warriors, but also craftsmen and artisans. This has allowed the Eldari to have advanced levels of technology and more or less carry on as rulers of the galaxy after the Old Ones had left. Even though these advanced characteristics made the Eldari valuable to the Old Ones during the War in Heaven, it would also lead to the downfall of the Eldari race. It was their heightened senses, coupled with their unparalleled connection to the Immaterium, that would eventually cause them to damn themselves for all eternity. It was their thirst for perfection in all things and on all levels that would cause them to create their own worst enemy, quite literally. As previously mentioned, the Eldari would inherit the galaxy from the Old Ones, leaving them as the dominant species as far as civilization and technology were concerned. This was partially due to the fact that they had an advanced enough intellect to be able to master or at the very least maintain the technology of the Old Ones. This includes things such as the webway network that the Eldari make use of. That same network was laid out originally by the Old Ones. The Eldari simply inherited the webway and do their best to maintain it. There are in fact large areas of the webway that are collapsed and unpassable. Only the Harlequins have the whole picture, the whole map. It appears they do not have the means to repair it though, but they do their best uh, to maintain what hasn't fallen to time. The inheritance of the webway allowed the Eldari to build a vast empire across the galaxy. The webway gave them the ability to traverse the galaxy in a very short time span with no risk of the perils of the warp. 
Their technology was so advanced that they had no reason to work in fields or in factories. They had their technology to do that for them. This allowed the Eldari to be the most prominent race throughout the galaxy. Therefore, with no daily hardships, and with no major enemies, most citizens of the Eldari Empire had time to pursue more enjoyable pastimes. Many became obsessed with perfection in all things, from art to music, science, spirituality, as well as any other pursuit that may have struck their fancy. The thing that has to be understood about Aldari psychology here is that they will see a pursuit out until they have perfected whatever art is in question. That's why even in the 41st millennium, the Aldari of the craft worlds make use of aspect warriors that spend their lives each perfecting a different aspect of combat. This also means that once they develop a taste for extravagance, it will likely be taken to the extreme. If one were to develop an obsession with pain, it would go far further than any human is capable of withstanding, either mentally or physically. This means that a large portion of the Eldari populace became hedonistic and, for lack of a better word, kinky. <laughs> they sought greater and greater pleasures, aiming to reach the extreme of whatever they might be obsessed with. Obviously, the Eldari mind is capable of deep focus, which is why the path of the Aspect Warrior is such an important part of the citizens of the craft worlds. It keeps their mind preoccupied with combat rather than the darker aspects of their psyche. If you want to see what the depraved Eldari were like, the best example is the Drukari. They are basically what the Eldari of the homeworlds had become, of course, with an additional 10,000 years of development in their weird little third dimension of Kamara. There were those Eldari that saw this slow descent into madness as it was happening and decided to settle on the farthest edges of the galaxy, on worlds rich with life where they could live off the land by hunting and farming and under undertaking the daily hardships that make life more valuable and not allow the luxuries of time to form things like pleasure cults. These Eldari are what are known as the Exodites. They exist into the 41st millennium, and it appears with little fear of Slaanesh, so that might actually be a topic for a future video. The Eldari of the Craft Worlds are a, of a similar mindset. They consist of the descendants of those who got disgusted by what their race had become, and fled the home worlds on worlds that they had crafted to pursue a life of solitude and discipline separate from the decadent and depraved society that the great Eldari Empire had become. Sadly, these couple of exceptions to the rule were not populous enough to counter the sheer amount of depravity and excess their race had devolved into. The massive amount of emotion was so powerful within the Immaterium, it literally developed a consciousness of its own. The thoughts of the majority of their race coalesced into a gestating embryo of a god. As the Eldari sought more and more perfection in all things pleasurable and decadent, this god fetus was birthed into a fully fledged god. Eldari mythology speaks of the Prince of Pre Pleasure literally killing their gods, which will be covered in greater detail in future content as well, but for now we'll say he, she, killed Lilith, Azurian, and Morai Heg. Uh, Kelamensha Cain, on the other hand, fought valiantly against the newborn god and was eventually cast down and shattered into fragments that were dispersed amongst the infinity circuits of the craft worlds. Uh, we'll also be covering the concept of shards and uh, and the Infinity Circuit in later content as well, but that's basically what happened to Cain, the bloody-handed one. Slanesh apparently captured Isha, the goddess of life and healing. Hearing her cries for help, Nurgle defeated Slanesh and took Isha as his own. She remains forever imprisoned in Nurgle's garden, being a, basically a lab rat for the Lord of Plague's many diseases and contagions. <laughs> Her immense healing powers help Nurgle gauge how powerful his various illnesses and ailments will be. As the eldest of the Chaos Gods, perhaps it was simply Nurgle asserting his dominance upon the newborn prince. 
Jigorak, the trickster god of the Eldari pantheon, used the conflict between Slanesh and Cain as a way to escape into the webway. The fates of Kurnos and Val are to me unknown, but it's quite possible they still exist somewhere in the Immaterium. If anyone has any information on them, I'd love to know where these uh, deities have been and if they have any bearing on the 41st millennium of the setting. Either way, the birth of Slanesh was bad news for pretty much all the Eldari gods. In the physical universe, the birth of Slanesh was a galaxy-changing event, especially for the future of humanity, as well as a few other races, I suppose. Once the fetal Slanesh had erupted into existence, millions of Eldari had their souls ripped from their bodies in order to fuel the literal creation of a god. This caused a massive tear in the veil between the material universe and the immaterium. This tear enveloped all of the Eldari homeworlds. These homeworlds, of course, being the center of the Eldari Empire, and the capital, for lack of a better term, of their entire society. The same society that fell into extreme decadence and depravity, which led to the creation of Slash in the first place. These worlds would later become known as the Crone Worlds, or better known as the Demon Worlds. The Terror that houses these Demon Worlds would later be dubbed the Eye of Terror by the Primarch of the Iron Warriors, Pritorabo, a name that would stick. These would become the homes of, the, of most of the traitor legions that fell during the Horus Heresy, as well as other demonic minions of chaos looking to wage war on the Imperium, or, you know, the mortal universe. And so, we see how a god is born. It is a universe-changing event. The Eldari put a large pockmark on the galaxy, and at the same time doomed their race to flee from Slanesh for all time. The updated Fluff Games Workshop has been giving us these past couple of years shows that the Eldari are at it again. They are gestating Inead, the god of the dead. They believe this new god to be the savior of their race, which will finally defeat Slanesh. I'm thinking good or bad, I wonder how destructive the birth of another Eldar god will be. Maybe the Cicatrix Maledictum is no coincidence either. But that's just me pontificating. And on that note, that's all we have time for today, I guess. Uh, I hope you've all been enjoying this series as much as I've been enjoying compiling it. If you like this video, make sure to hit like. If you want to hear more, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future content. If you want to help support us, you can do one of two things. There's a link in the description below to our Patreon and our Spreadshirt pages, both of which get you awesome rewards and gets us a few bucks to keep the ball rolling. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on Slanesh's birth, or even your theories on Inead. I'd love to hear more about that. In fact, I wouldn't mind even dedicating another video to Inead specifically in the future. So let me hear your thoughts in the comments below, and uh, we'll see you at our next encounter.